come to the conclusion, the chapter 4 of the book of Philippians that we've been uh, going through in this early morning. Uh, it's early, maybe it's early to some of y'all. We live in the eastern time zone, so it's 8 o'clock to me. You know. <laughs> I get up about this time. I get up about this time anyway. <laughs> I'm retired, so I don't have to go punch a clock someplace generally. Uh, if you would, turn to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We've been looking at, as we go, have gone through the book of Philippians. Uh, of course, the book of Philippians follows Ephesians, which is the, the doctrine of the mystery. And uh, Philippians is actually the reproof in uh, line with the, the doctrine that's put forth in Ephesians. But it's, it's reproof for mature saints. So the tone isn't quite like it is in, in Corinthians and Galatians. But if you would, let's, let's uh, read our text verse. My topic is Christ our provision. Uh, and Paul writes in Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And our topic this morning winds up the series for the week. Um, on Monday, the speaker looked at our purpose. Uh, Tuesday, he looked at Christ as our pattern. Uh, Wednesday, he looked at Christ as our prize. And today, we're going to look at Christ, our provision. Um, in the verse, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And uh, I'm sure the uh, name it and claim it bunch could grab a hold of this and run a mile or two with that. Uh, <laughs> but there's a context here. In the passage, if you, you've uh, followed down, in verse 14, Paul says, Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I've departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Um, the, the Philippians, from early on in Paul's ministry, uh, were enthused about seeing the message get out. And so they... Uh, he's more than one time when he was in Thessalonica, they sent provisions to, for Paul's upkeep. Paul was a, an itinerant minister. He, he traveled over the various areas trying to spread this message to the world. That was his instructions from God. And the Philippians were, were rejoicing in the message and had a heart to help encourage. Uh, the All things there Paul is talking about if you back up to verse 12, or maybe 11, uh, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The issue of abundance at one point and a lack of it at another point, these are just the daily variation in circumstances that are the essence of life. As I, as I started to get ready for this message and we're just pondering the, the various uh, statements in the uh, when you get old, your mind wanders around and does kind of goofy things. But, but 
there was a little ditty that came to mind that I recalled from uh, the 70s, somewhere back in that era. Um, and so you know, the co computers sometimes are kind of neat. I get in a fight with mine most of the time. But, but anyway, I Googled a little phrase that popped in my mind. And it turns out it was, I wasn't too far off. There was a song that was performed by John Denver. If any of y'all, I'm dating myself, I guess, but, but not nearly as bad as I have in some time, sometimes. Uh, but it, there was a little, a little ditty that, that John Denver did. It only has a couple of verses, but it, it's appropriate here. Uh, when you ask how I've been here without you, I like to say I've been fine, and I do. But we both know the truth is hard to come by, and if I told the truth, that's not quite true. Here's the, some days are diamonds, some days are stone. Sometimes the hard times won't leave me alone. Sometimes the cold winds blow a chill in my bones. Some days are diamonds, some days are stone. You've never had any days like that, have you? Yeah. <laughs> One day everything seems to be going just wonderful. The next day everything goes all to, to pieces. It, it, but that's just life. And Paul was experiencing that. But, but he said, I can do all things, and the all things are he has learned how to both be abased and how to suffer plenty, <laughs> but, but to have, have needs and have wants and then have them fulfilled. Um, but it wasn't just that. If you come to 2 Corinthians verse 11, or chapter 11, starting about verse 22, Paul in his ministry found out that things don't always go as wonderful as you'd like. Um, pick it up at about verse 23 of chapter 11, 2 Corinthians. Uh, he says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often of the Jews five times I re I received, or received, I, excuse me, 40 stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered a shipwreck. And that's before he got to the end of Acts where he was headed for Rome, and, and it happened again. So, uh, night and day I've been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils of the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, painfulness, and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, Besides those things that are nor without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. <coughs> there weren't too many diamond days in there, were there? <laughs> a lot of stones. There at one point you'd think Paul probably ought to, oh, should have gotten a concealed carry permit. But... Uh, <coughs> but Things weren't always going lovely every day. But again, 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. But if you, if you noticed in that list of things there till you get down to, to about verse 28, those things all had to do with his daily existence in the ministry. Those were things that were happening to him as he was, was carrying out his ministry. And you notice up at the top, when we started there in 23, he says, are they ministers of Christ? 
besides these, there was a, besides just the natural things that happened to him, there were, there were a bunch of people following Paul around, doing anything they could to interfere with or undermine his ministry. Back up just a little bit there to 2 Corinthians 10. In verse 10, notice uh, in verse 9, Paul says, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. Verse 10, for his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. But this bunch had a leader. Look in verse 11 where he says, Let such an one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also in deed when we are present. Uh, come down to verse 4 in chapter 11. Notice what he says. For if they that cometh preacheth another Jesus we have not preached or if you receive another spirit which you have not received or another gospel which you have not accepted ye might well bear with him though they this this bunch had a leader now drop down to verse or cha verse 22 of chapter 11 noticing he says are they hebrews so am i are they israelites notice today so am i so this was a group of Jews who were following Paul around seeking to undermine his ministry. Watch him show up in Galatia too. If you would come over to Galatians chapter 5. In verse 10 to 12. Where Paul says, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. So Paul's got a bunch of guys following him around that are doing their best to undermine his ministry. He's, he's an itinerant preacher. He, he's traveling and travels in those days were rather hazardous. So there are all kinds of problems. And yet Paul learned, if you will come back to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul learned some things. 12.1, he said, it's not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up to paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for man to utter. Paul's speaking of the revelations that he got. Of such a one I will glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Drop down to verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Now there's a lot of, a lot of various discussion about exactly what that thorn was. But pick it up again where we stopped. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart me, depart from me, excuse me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. What's the provision? God's grace. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul says, Most gladly therefore will I glory 
in my infirmity, infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities that could be physical infirmities, in reproaches that could deal with these guys following him around, harassing him in his ministry, <clears throat> in distresses for Christ's sake, that could be his traveling difficulties, in persecution and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Notice again in verse 9 that he glories in my infirmities, what? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul learned that in his weaknesses, when he felt that he was unable then he could experience the power of God. Thus there's no boasting for Paul. The power is of Christ. Amen. May rest upon me. And as, if, as you read through Paul's epistles, and I'm going to do this here. We're going to fly through a few verses uh, to point this out. The issue is that it's Christ, not us. If you would, come back to Philippians chapter 4. And pick it up in verse 6. In verse 5, Paul says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful, and that careful is not like watch where you're walking, but it's don't be filled with care about everything going on around you. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer, with supplication and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Don't let your mind get all filled up with all this craziness in the world that's going on around you, it's only going to get worse. And you can stay stressed out over that if you want to, but it's a lot better if you think on these other things that Paul just gave us in that list. Though, verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. Verse 10, he says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly now that at the last your care of me hath flourished again. Not that I speak, verse 11, in respect of want, for I have learned. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Whatever the situation was, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. If you would come to Romans chapter 3. Um, I thought of what Rick said Saturday night in, in uh, the way he started off with 2 Corinthians 11.3 that, that the simplicity of Christ in Philippians 3.1 what is safe 
for you. Fill yourself up with the doctrines of the of grace, rightly divided, and there's safety, and it's simple. Romans chapter 3, verse 22 We'll just break into the context here. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. What's the provision? Jesus Christ is the provision. Which upon all, or unto all, excuse me, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Where is it? It's in Christ. Uh, come to chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, and who's the him? Jesus Christ. That justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Come to chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who's the provision? Jesus Christ is. By whom, by Christ, also we have access by faith into this grace wherein ye stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Verse 6, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse 8, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So in verse 6, Without strength in our helplessness, Christ was the provision. In verse 8, In our sinfulness, when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ is the provision. Verse 10, For if, when we were enemies, there's our willfulness, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, and much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Uh, Come to chapter 8. We'll skip over chapter 7 about being caught up in the law. We don't want to do that. <laughs> in chapter 8, I start about verse 14. He says, For as many as are led, there's grace motivation. You're not commanded, but are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. There's an inheritance there. You're in the family. You're children of God. And everything that the Lord Jesus Christ inherits, you inherit. Drop down to verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Come down to 
verse 28. And watch this. And we know that all things, what did Paul say in, in uh, Philippians 4.13? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Verse 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things. And it's by the son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Come to verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ is the provision. It's in Christ that we have everything we have. Come to Ephesians 1, 3. You should be familiar with this passage. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Christ is the provision. Uh, come to Colossians chapter 2. And verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and build it up in him established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the rudiment of men, after the rudiments, of, or excuse me, the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Hold on to Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body, bodily. And verse 10, and ye are complete in him. Can there any, be anything added to completeness? No. If it's complete, it's all there. And not only that, notice who this is that you're complete in. He's the head of all principality and power, all those governmental positions in the heavens and in the earth, he's the head. He's the top dog, the big guy, you know, and you're complete in him. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Uh, 13, and you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, 
He hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, all those guys that were in there before pretending to be in charge, he spoiled them. He took a spoil of them. He took it away from them, triumphing over them in it, and the it is a cross. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a holy day or of new moon of Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. That all seems kind of simple when you just read through it, but that it is simple. When you read through Paul's epistles, you will find the prepositions ahead of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in Christ. It's through Christ. And as you read through, watch for those phrases. They're everywhere. Christ is our provision. We have everything through him, by him, in him. The uh, message Monday was Christ is our purpose. The purpose is, that is, to know and have the life of Christ in you. Tuesday morning, it was the mind of Christ that you have that thinking pattern that Christ demonstrated. Yesterday morning, it was to know him, and it was the prize of knowing the life of Christ in you. How do you do all that? Christ is the provision. Whatever the need is that you have, Christ is the provision for that need. And, and that ought to make your heart merry. It's safe, it's simple. And Proverbs 15, 15 concludes, he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. You're glad, you're, your heart should be thrilled every day when you think of that. Uh, come to Titus, verse 3, or chapter 3, verse 4 and 7, 4 to 7, and this will be our closing prayer, where Paul writes, I still hear the pages turning, <laughs> okay, uh, Paul writes, but after that the kingdom, the kindness, excuse me, but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.